Hello. The main purpose of this brief review module is to go over the main Verilog constructs useful to you in design and verification of RTL. In addition, I'm going to go over suggested hierarchy that will be useful to you in your projects. So I'm going to start at the bottom within a module. You have a module I've called Data Path uh, with a few procedural blocks in it and continuous assignment statements on this and the next page. Uh, it's not meant to be a complete module, uh, it is just extracts from an example module. Let's start at the top here. We have the specifications of our inputs and outputs. I've used the Verilog 2001 format of not just naming the signals, but specifying whether they're inputs or outputs, specify and specifying their width, and pre-declaring the outputs to the appropriate data type. So here, example out is declared as type reg, so I don't have to repeat something like this to repair it later. Of course, variables declared type reg are assigned how? They're assigned procedurally, whether they're a register or not. Next we have our local variables. Here I'll give the example of uh, foo, declared as type wire. Foo is assigned on the next page. And what type of assignment leads to type wire? Continuous assignment. Note of course that all the variables assigned within this design should be declared either in the header list or if they're not inputs or outputs to the design, or more specifically outputs, be declared as local variables. In synthesizable design, you, you will not be assigning to inputs to the module because that represents the output of a logic block built outside this module. So next I have a couple of procedural blocks to uh, illustrate the main two types of code. Of course, everything assigned after an always at pause edge clock becomes a what? Becomes the output of a flip-flop. In order to capture the intrinsic parallelism of flip-flops, I urge you to always use non-blocking assignments when assigning to flip-flops. Here we have two registers being built, a register called state and a register called example out, uh, which is obviously connected to the port example out at the top there. The register to state has a reset signal going to it. Remember, reset is a golden signal uh, asserted on power up or an external pin to the design. You cannot modify it, but you need to use it to get your machine into a known state upon the external world asserting reset. Here I've used a case statement as an example of coding example out with its in, some of its input logic. It is very common for registers in a design to have input selectors associated with them, so a variety of different inputs can be fed to them, and this is just a subcase of an example of doing that using a case statement based on some select logic going to a MUX. On this page we have a procedural block building combinational logic. Uh, the only variable I'm signing in this extract is out, which of course again has to be declared as what data type? Type reg. So in Verilog 2001 we can use always at star so we don't have to deal with maintaining sensitivity lists. In this example of a case x statement, case statements, particularly case x statements, are very common in procedural blocks describing combinational logic. Usually you use a procedural block to describe combinational logic when you're describing the behavior of the block rather than the structure. If you're just designing a logic structure, you're better off using continuous assignment. It is less typing. So in this snippet of an example here, we have uh, some inputs. It's SEL2. The thing matched along cost alternatives on the left-hand side. Notice these alternatives can also be variables themselves. Here I concatenate A and B as a possible match to SEL2. We'll end this with default, a default statement. Default was not necessary on the previous page when we were describing flip-flops. 
Here it is useful. Uh, it certainly prevents unintentional latches to default all the outputs of the logic block somehow. In addition, it propagates don't cares during startup. Uh, and that's explicitly the behavior that I'm, I'm, I'm supporting here. So again, this is very useful when describing the behavior of a logic block. For example, you can just draw a truth, write a truth table in a case x statement. And it's a very useful way to describing the behavior of a logic block. You might have to decide when to build a combinational logic block to describe in, in, as a procedural block rather than when you can group it together with its flip-flops. The decision is if it's useful to name a signal, such as here it is useful to name a signal out, then you need to build a procedural block to describe combinational logic. Here I have continuous assignment. Continuous assignment can only be used to describe the structure of a piece of logic. Here the structure uh, the bundles of wires out one and out two are being drawn together and then all those wires are going through an OR gate to produce a one-bit result. Whenever you have structure rather than behavior it is very useful to use continuous assignment. Some other important rules to deal with are uh, to, to remember when designing logic within the module Remember that throughout your entire synthesizable design, each variable can only be assigned in one procedural block or in one continuous assignment statement. So for example here, we can't reassign foo within the procedural block, we can't reassign out in another procedural block. This of course is to prevent unintentional wired or logic. Very important to make sure the combinational logic does not feed back on itself. Here's an example in code. Foo is the output of one logic structure, is used as an input to another logic structure whose output is bar, which is used back again to result in foo. So here we have an infinite loop in combinational logic or an unintentional latch in combinational logic. This is forbidden. And remember, it is very useful in synthesis for every logic path to have at least one flip-flop between every primary input and every primary output. This makes your job of managing timing within synthesis much easier. Once you have your leaf module blocks, it is quite useful, though not essential, but it's quite useful to assemble them together in some higher level block. In your projects, you're likely to only have two modules, data path and controller, though if you have finite state machines and wish to perform FSM optimization, you might break those out into explicit modules. So here I have a module top with the inputs and outputs to the module. The only place I'm using this in this the design is in the, in the test fixture, so I only need the outputs that have to go back to the test fixture. Then at the core of this, we have our, our instances of two logic blocks, instancing data path, we're calling this instance U1, instancing controller, calling this instance U2. Note, of course, that the instance names have to be different. And I'm connecting wires of these together to each other and to the inputs and outputs of the, of the module top. So for example, clock comes from the top, dot clock refers to the uh, um, refers to the clock inside the module, clock refers to the, the clock name inside top. As a simple example, go down the bottom there, you see dot C1, parentheses, control one. Control one is the name of the wire within the module top. Dot C1 is the name of the output port or input port of module controller. Again, remember that all outputs of instance modules are of type wire. So example out is coming out of module data path instance U1, and that has to be declared as type wire. 
similarly if control 1 is the output is an output of module controller instance u2 it also is declared as type y notice there is no logic in this module it consists solely of instanced modules i.e. there's no logic above these leaf cell instance modules if you put logic in this module you cannot synthesize this cleanly you instead have to flatten the hierarchy within this and synthesize it as one complete block and of course you have your test fixture which is used to simulate the design are there no inputs or outputs required for the test fixture you have to declare all variables assigned in this test fixture including all outputs of instance modules outputs of instance modules have to be declared as type y for example example out here all variables assigned within the procedural block are declared as type reg or type y depending on how they're assigned usually they'll be assigned in procedural blocks so they'll be declared as type reg here it is useful to have an initial statement which starts up when the simulator starts up uh, of course initial is non-synthesizable you won't see it in the RTL this goes through a series of statements for example here we're starting the clock at zero note this is a separate always statement that inverts the clock every 10 nanoseconds here to make a 50 megahertz clock it's just one example of something you might see in the test fixture hash 100 means uh, 100 nanoseconds of delay from the previous statements remember the delays accumulate here I've got a, an example of self-checking code I'm actually looking at the output example out of module top and if it's 8HFF, I'm, I know that's an error condition somehow, so I display error to the, to the screen. Down here, I've instanced the module top, which contains my complete design hierarchy, calling that U1, and connecting its inputs and outputs to features within the test fixture. Uh, for, for example, connecting the clock to an input, connecting example out to an output. In addition, I need to build my memories here. Uh, so here I, I build an SRAM, giving an instance name M1. This happens to use example out from uh, module top, connected to its input port data in as one of its ports. Remember, don't synthesize your SRAMs or blow up your synthesis run, and it's unrealistic. SRAMs are built using a module generator, not using synthesis. Because we've designed one module top that contains all our RTL, uh, that were more precisely instances the modules contain in the RTL, this simplifies our approach to synthesis. Right. The read Verilog command or commands has to read in all the files within the design. Uh, it could be one or multiple files, that's up to you. But what is then important is to set current design to top. If you do this, you can set constraints to the entire design as one unit, and it greatly simplifies the compile. You don't have to manage it by hand, as I, as I talked about in the hierarchy notes. Instead, if you if you make sure module to current design is top uh, before you set the constraints and before you do the compile, what it actually does internally is compiles the modules one at a time after internally running a characterized command one at a time so all the inputs and output delays between the modules within your design are worked out for you notice this cannot work out the inputs and outputs delays to the memories they are external to what's being synthesized here you have to manage those by hand yourself which i'm not describing in these notes because it varies uh, from a project to project so that's the end of this section. Uh, it's meant to be a, a brief review of many major concepts of how to, how to code structures 
uh, useful in this class, useful in the project, and useful to you as a practicing engineer. Uh, more resources that might be useful to you, in particular, you might want to look at the, um, uh, the checklist that's provided with the project, the non-technical part of the project requirements. I hope this module has been useful to you. Thanks very much for paying attention.